Okay, so we've talked a little briefly about our system here for the shower, how we got a built-in bench. But let's talk about our finishing, because this is what I would consider to be a superior waterproofing system, shower installation, than a lot of others. And I know we've got some flack on the channel before because we've used drywall with waterproofing systems. And yes, there are some areas in North America where it's building code that you have to use cement fiberboard. So we thought we'd do this video with the cement board just to demonstrate the differences. And largely the differences are in the, the cutting techniques, to be honest with you. I mean, putting in cement board or drywall or anything else doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but you need the right tools. So what we're gonna use real quick, we have to switch out our wooden blade. And that's one of the reasons why I love this saw because everything I need for changing my blades is right here. If I can do it, there we go. I always forget skill saws are backwards, eh? There we go. Now, you can't use a wood blade with carbide tip to cut cement board because it'll almost blind you the amount of dust it creates. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm switching out a blade that's got 60 tooth for a cement fiber board blade that has six teeth. Now, this blade is not a huge investment. It's less than $20. It's worth picking up. It's available at your local Home Depot. And it just pops on like any other blade. Just make sure your carbide tips are face pointing because the blade rotates counterclockwise. So the blade will be cutting that direction. If you put it on backwards, you'll just sit there and burning a hole in nothing, driving yourself crazy, wondering why you can't cut the board. The funny thing is it will cut, but it won't go straight. You'll just be all over the place driving yourself crazy. I love my saw. I just push this little button here and I can tighten this back on with the wrench. That nice and easily stores in the handle. Love this saw. Now we can use this. We're only cutting half inch material. So we'll set the blade a little bit shorter so that we're not increasing the amount of heat that we're causing. If you bury the whole blade through the cement board, then all of that blade's making contact as it goes around. It overheats really quickly, and then you'll just start veering off track as it goes warped. So, there we go. Put all this back in the case for now. And then we are going to cut the last few boards here that go on this wall. So they're basically two kinds of cement fiber board, quarter inch and half inch thickness. And you will notice that the quarter inch comes with this grid. And the idea behind this is if you take your utility knife, you can just score and snap. Usually you can just score it and snap it, but not like with your hands. You want to set that edge up on a two by four and then stand on the other piece and it'll break off. And so you can measure and cut that way without the blade. But honestly, I just suggest getting the blade. It gives you a lot more versatility. The half inch doesn't score and snap. You're going to need the blade and you're going to need that half inch anytime your shower wall is connected to another drywall or surface of the room. Drywall is half an inch, so you want to use half inch cement board here. If you only use the quarter, you've got to attach two layers. And I just think that's bad business. <laughs> These screws that come for this product, there's a blue coating and they're going to be specially marked for use with cement board. There's also a product out there with green screws as well. Boom. And it installs on the surface. Okay. It's going to be a bump. Don't worry about that. You don't have to go flush because when you're applying your cement for all of your stone, you're gonna be using a 3 8 or quarter or half inch cement line anyway. Now, of course our system for that is to use the fiber tape on all the corners. It's kind of like doing drywall, only after we put the tape on, you wanna get some quick set cement and you wanna apply with a four inch knife just to set up and seal all the corners before you use a waterproofing membrane. And yes, with cement board, I suggest using a waterproof membrane. This board itself does not get damaged when it gets wet, but if you don't have a waterproof membrane, you're not diverting all the water that gets behind your tile back into your drain. You're still allowing this to soak up the water and sooner or later that water will find its way to your frame and it will create a siphon. And that siphon every time you shower will put water into the wood. And at one point that wood will have so much water it'll start to drip. That's when it's gonna come through the ceiling underneath you. The cool thing about these screws is that they're really sharp points. So they get through that cement board like nothing. The difficult part is if you have a bunch in your hand, you're gonna poke yourself full of holes. 
Now you want to install this about the same as you would drywall, okay? One screw every 12 inches. Ow! <laughs> this is where this gets interesting, right? Okay, well we're just putting on our self-adhesive fiberglass mesh tape. Part of the process for dealing with this cement board. The um, product recommendation is that we use a little bit of quick set over top of that cement. Once it's dry, we can take out our Aqua Defense green membrane. It's the roll on, and we'll just paint the shower before we tile. Yeah, really handy. Inside corner trowel. We're putting mesh in these corners. It's not too often you use mesh in a corner. If you're stuck on a drywall job, you can do it. You want to use a quick set cement in those applications. And the same thing here, since we're using a quick set cement, I can use this corner trowel just to embed the tape. And the reason we're using this is to give the cement something to bond to, so it's a continuous bond from one surface to the next. And then, yikes! When it's all said and done, and the cement's dry, then we paint our waterproofing membrane on there. This would be a very, very, very effective way to create a waterproof shower DIY and save a ton of money. There we go. Okay. This is actually a great time to ask if you have any questions about waterproofing systems. Just put them in the comment section below because we've used Schluter, we've used regular drywall, we've used a Schluter membrane, the Curdy board, we've used Red Guard, we've used Aqua Defense on drywall, now we're using it on cement board. Every one of these systems is a little bit different, has different pros and cons, including cost and availability. So if you're not sure, you can always ask your questions. Uh, we even did a tile over tile video once, which shows you how to waterproof your existing space and then put a new look inside of the existing one. So, I mean, there's a lot of options out there. And there's no such thing as one right way to do it. There's just a whole lot of different right ways to do it according to what's best for you. <laughs> so here's a question I get all the time. Basically, it's the understanding of how do these assemblies go together. You'll see that this is a shower pan and it has what we call an integrated tile flange, okay? This, this rising piece here is part of the continuous part of the pour of the shower pan. And it goes right up against the framework of the space. It's exactly the same as the tub. A tub has an integrated tile flange as well. So whether it's 16 inches high, 20 inches high, or two inches high, they all operate exactly the same. The base gets put up against the framework, and then your substrate, whether it's cement or drywall or curdy board or weedy board, whatever you're using, comes and sits on top of this. The secret here is it doesn't matter if it sits directly on top of it, and in most cases I suggest leave a space because these products have a tendency to flex around when you're walking in them or sitting in them if you're tub. What you do is you just take your mesh tape or your curdy bands, that orange tape that comes with the curdy schluter system, and you tape the gap. It almost seems ridiculous when you think about it, but it's so effective. Okay, and then what we're going to do is follow the manufacturer's instructions. We're going to put our quick set cement over top of all of this just to fill it up. It's kind of like doing drywall when we use our, our, um, our 20 minute mix in all of our gaps and cracks before we tape. Similar kind of concept. Here we're going to be filling that gap with cement. Then we're going to be applying our membrane which would then get painted from this point all the way up the wall. So there is no way for the water to get in behind any of these substrates or in between any of these cracks once you're finished that way. And that is how you complete your assembly so that you have a complete water diversion system all the way through your shower right to your drain. <laughs> this is my favorite waterproofing membrane, Aqua Defense by MapEye. Uh, it's just a simple roll on, two coats, you're good to go. Uh, rolls on thick, doesn't run. And the best part about it is one of these tubs will do about four showers. So it's awesome. What we're going to do now is I actually have to run to the store, pick up a bag of quick set cement because I don't have one. I thought I did, but it's been in storage too long and it's gone all clumpy. So I'm going to grab another one. We'll do the quick joints. And then after that's set up in about 20 minutes or so, we'll be able to roll this on. 
And of course, it's just part of the whole process, right? Get your board on, get it attached, get it taped, get it filled, get it waterproofed, and then it's tile time. But we can do all of that tomorrow. So by the end of tomorrow, we're actually gonna have all of our tile done in here, and it'll start to look like a bathroom. I am so excited. So now that our cement board is done, our mesh tape is all installed, we're gonna use our cement compound just to fill in the gaps to create a nice bond from one surface to the next. Uh, we're using Speedset. This is a product I found at a local building store. It sets up in like 15 or 20 minutes, so you gotta work quick. Make it in small batches. Put the water in the pail first, add the mix, give it a quick whip, and then run to job. <laughs> it's gonna be a little nutty, but uh, we'll probably do two or three applications of this, get it all done, and in about a half an hour from now, we'll be able to actually do the waterproofing membrane on the shower. The uh, recommendation from the company that sells the fiberboard is not just put the tape on, but to add the cement. So we're gonna show you all of the proper procedures today just to make sure that you got the right information. I've got it now where I'm just a little bit thicker than a slurry, which is perfect. Now we gotta run. So the idea is to fill in the gap at the base. This is the most crucial point. And we can always revisit this again after the cement starts to set up. Doesn't have to be pretty right now. Just get it in there. Just one application will do the job. And we can clean it all off afterwards. Although the cement, the cement uh, sets pretty quick. There's lots of working time while it's finishing the hardening process for us to clean it off the shower pan. Of course, make sure you peel back your plastic if you're putting in a new shower pan. Get it out of the way, because if you waterproof while the plastic's in place, the water will find a way behind it, and that would be disastrous. Okay, so now it's kind of like drywall, right? Bob Ross, the drywall. <laughs> a cement forest. A little tree here in the mountains. All right, now we're gonna work quick here just to get everything. Really the goal is just to get the cement in the fiber so that you have a surface that the water the membrane can bond to. It's starting to get stiff now. This is actually, this is actually the way I like it. I do like it a little stiffer. And this is just kind of like in your car. You put it on, then you take it off. You want to try to leave your surface as smooth and flat as possible so nothing's in the way of the tile installation. If you're working on making a steam shower, the only difference in your application is you want to take your cement board or your waterproof drywall or something, put it on the ceiling and continue all these mesh joints, do the entire ceiling as well. Now generally steam showers, they hold the steam and they have full door systems floor to ceiling. So you really are encapsulating yourself, more like a submarine. In this system, I'm just creating water diversion and protecting myself against a little bit of steam, but not a big deal. In your, when you're in here, the wiring is set, the fan will be on with the lights, and it's guaranteed to evacuate all of the moisture in this room. So, again, to what degree you wanna prep yourself for how, what kind of longevity is up to you. But if you use cement board and you seal the joints and you use a waterproofing membrane system, most shower systems with a decent fan in the room, you're looking at a 50 to 75 year shower. Not gonna be a worry. And I'm more than happy with that. So we had enough time to get our subfloor down and now that stuff is hard. It's not completely dried out and cured yet, but it does not matter. It is a solid substrate and it's ready to receive our waterproofing system, which is our AquaGuard. Now, I love this product. I've used it before. As a matter of fact, the last bathroom we used this in was in our Mother's Day video, actually. It was the tile over tile video. Ah. And I mentioned in that one before that uh, the tub is a little bit too big for one shower. so. 
if you keep it handy, you can use it again. And here we are, using the rest of this tub. <laughs> you know, good value. Most houses are two bedroom homes, if you have a, three bedrooms in it. So you're gonna have two showers to renovate over your lifetime. You know, one of them you might wanna redo it completely like this. And the other one you might just wanna give it a bit of a facelift, like a tile over tile job. You should check out that video. We'll put the link in the description. You can see how you can remodel and the differences versus renovating. Now this stuff is awesome. We're just gonna be cutting in. This is just like painting a wall, right? It's brush and roll. We're bringing our waterproofing system right down to the acrylic base, okay? Before we tile. Here we go. So we're just gonna use this just like we're cutting a wall. Get a nice little coat here. We want to put this on pretty thick. The secret to an effective membrane is actually in the thickness of the material when it's dry. So unlike a wall, where less is more, with waterproofing systems, the more you can leave on, the better. MapEye is a Canadian company, and it has a pretty big distribution circle. But depending on where you are in this country, North America, or the world, you're gonna have a tile company that'll have a roll-on membrane. This is not a unique product. Been on the market for 20, 30 years. And you can find out whatever distributors you have for tile supply and cements, they'll have this product as well. It's very common in commercial applications to use a roll-on membrane when you're tiling. I actually had somebody just the other day mention that uh, they're a guard in the prison system in the UK. And they just redid all of the prisoner showers. And they just used the roll-on membrane, tiled right over top of whatever was there before. And that is how they did the job there, and they saved a fortune for the taxpayers. I don't think it was on my advice, but the point is, it's a, it's a good system. It is used by professionals. It is accepted in the industry. So I know there's a lot of guys that like to talk trash about that kind of a product, but at the end of the day, there's a reason these products are on the market and these kind of roll-on membranes are worth their weight in gold. You don't necessarily have to upgrade to fancy board systems and Weedy and Curdy and Schluter, all these things. I like to say it like this. Based on the investment in the tile and the renovation and the life expectancy of the project, then your substrate systems and your waterproofing system should be relative to that. So if you're only spending $500 on tile for your bathroom makeover, it doesn't make any sense to spend $1,000 on waterproofing. Especially if you're doing it yourself. But if you're spending $1,000 on tile, maybe you're in that market where looking at protecting that investment for a longer period of time might make some sense. Get it? Rolling? <laughs> ah, that's awesome. So depending on the design of your shower, again, if this is a steam shower, you want to waterproof all of the walls and the ceiling. This is just a regular shower. We're going to have a fan. So really, I could get away with just doing the bottom four feet with the waterproofing system because the cement board, it doesn't get damaged if it gets a little bit of moisture in it which is why people like to use it and why some states actually have made that part of the building code. But the reality is, if you really want to protect your investment, you want to make sure the water doesn't get to the, the framework behind the cement board, which is why we're using the membrane. It's not the cement board we're worried about. Once it gets wet, it'll transfer that moisture into the wood frame behind it over time. And once the wood starts sucking up that moisture, it'll pull it through the cement create a siphon and start dripping on your ceiling. So really what we want to do here is protect the most vulnerable areas from absorbing water. And that is the bottom four feet and around the bench so that when you're done your shower and you're rinsing off your walls and stuff, you're not allowing that water to penetrate and cause an issue.
Yep, time for coat number two. <laughs> Between all of us. Personally, I think that first coat is gonna be fine. But, <clears throat> this is all about being safe than sorry. Because it only takes one spot for the water to penetrate and cause a whole lot of grief. So, if there's ever a time in construction to have a mindset of doing overkill, the waterproofing membrane is the time to do it. Funny thing is, most of the time when it's time to do overkill, it's the stuff that no one ever sees when you're finished. <laughs> uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm a big believer that people should DIY their own bathroom renovations. Because the most important stuff, the plumbing, the waterproofing, all these types of things, these are things that aren't part of the finished project. They're things that if you don't do right, that's where you run into problems. And they're usually the areas where people will cut corners if they're in a hurry. And that's why I think homeowners are their best general contractors out there. Okay. So here's the million dollar question for you. If you've seen some of our other videos, you might have noticed we've done a lot of different types of waterproofing systems. There's no one way to do it. Do you like the green stuff? Do you like the red guard? Do you like the curdy membrane? Do you like the curdy board? Do you like cement board versus waterproof drywall? A lot of different options out there. I'm curious to hear your opinion. And actually, if you could put in the comment section below, I'd love to know what state or country you live in and what your minimum code is where you live. Because this is one area that is different all over the board. So I chose to waterproof basically at three to four feet, all the way around, including the bench, because I did not have enough material in this bucket to do a whole second shower right to the ceiling. But because this doesn't absorb moisture, and I'm not gonna be standing here spraying water at the wall all day long, I'm not too concerned about it. But where I am concerned about it is if water gets behind the tile and it settles down here, I wanna make sure I divert it back into the shower pan. That's why we're sealing up the bench and around the shower nook area that I'm building and sealing it up right down to the acrylic base. We're not taking any chances. And I know some people might think, oh, you're cutting corners. I think if I waterproofed all of the joints so the water didn't have anywhere to escape, and I left the ability for water behind the tile to get back under the pan, it'll be just fine. Now listen, if you're interested in any of the tools that I'm using and you want to know where to buy them, you can always check out our Amazon link in the description of the video below because that has a link with all of our painting gear and all of my favorite tools as well. And before we go, let's just talk about if you're interested to see how this project turns out, then click the link right here and we'll show you this beginning to end 1880s rebuilt of a bathroom. Whew, gonna be awesome.